understanding that we're saved by grace through faith and that it's by nothing that we did allows us to understand that God has done something in Christ Jesus that saved us. Only that saves us. So what we're doing today is we're looking at um, two examples. One, willful sin, and a second, um, broken heredity or a broken bloodline and, and a physical thing that happened that the person didn't want, but it happened. First one is the story of the woman caught in adultery. This story shows that the Pharisees brought to Jesus a woman caught in the act of adultery and um, wanted her to be uh, punished according to the Mosaic law. And Jesus, which was stoning her to death, and Jesus would not um, tell them they couldn't. But what he said was, let you who has no sin cast the first stone. And everybody from the oldest to the youngest walked away because no one was without sin. And it reminds us of the good person graph. There's nobody good enough to get to God except for Jesus Christ. And so for the woman in adultery, caught in sin, there was grace for her in Christ. For the other story we used, which was Mephibosheth out of 2 Samuel 9, what we recognize is this is a young boy who as a baby, his nursemaid fell on him trying to escape after his father Saul and, or his grandfather Saul and his father Jonathan were killed in battle. Um, what we recognize is he had his legs broken and he was part of a former dynasty, the dynasty of Saul that died after one generation. And then there's this new King David who wants to show kindness to the descendants of Jonathan, his best friend, who was Saul's son. And David, instead of being a king who exacts vengeance on the former dynasty who had a claim to the throne, David brought him in and even though he was of the wrong bloodline and even though he was of no value to them in their, in their home and in their culture, David brought, them, brought him in and had him at his table all the days of his life. David showed him grace even though he had a broken heredity. And what that means to me is this. These two stories show us that in being saved by grace through faith, we understand that the grace is a sovereign work of God that only Jesus could do. Only Jesus could give us the grace that gets us to God. So in receiving grace from God, we, un we realize we are getting undeserved favor or kindness. We can't deserve it, but Jesus loved us enough to redeem us. So what we do is we look at this and we realize that this grace is not from ourselves. The way I said it Sunday was we need to understand first and foremost that we are saved only by the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and nothing else. That's what secures our salvation. But we must remember, in order to remember that, we remember that we have a heredity of sin, we are broken at birth, but we also participate in willful sin. We, no matter how good we are, could never close the gap between us and God. It's God's grace that drew us close. So we recognize that for us, we have to ask, what does grace mean in our life? So I wanna invite you today to think about this. Receive the free gift of grace if you haven't. Uh, it's kind of blunt, it's brutal, but it's this. You're the woman caught in adultery. You are. Nobody else. You're Mephibosheth. You're a broken heredity, a bad bloodline that has gone wrong. There's nothing you can do except lean into the grace of God in Jesus Christ. The undeserved favor of God and the kindness of Christ in your life. All you can do to be saved is receive the grace of God in Christ Jesus. And we do that on Jesus' terms, not ours. We don't tell him what we'll do to come to him. We simply accept the gift. The second thing is to give the grace you've received. If you've received Christ and you know him, give grace freely. Remember the story of Jesus and the, and the, the wicked servant who owed like $500,000 to his master, begged for mercy and his master forgave his debt. But when the, when the servant went out, he ended up choking a man who owed him $100 and had him thrown in prison. And Jesus, threw, Jesus said the king would bring that man back in and throw him in jail to the tormentors, which means this. We can't be judgmental. We can't be lame and judgmental and self-righteous. We have to be a living reflection of the grace we received. 
we get to be people who believe generously in others and believe that Jesus loves them as much as he loves us. Don't be your worst. Be his best. Reflect the grace you've received. And finally, grace is transformational. Since we have a broken heredity, which isn't our fault, but also willful sins, which are our fault, we recognize that we are trapped in that unless we give ourselves to Christ. So lean into that identity in Jesus Christ and allow yourself to see beyond your heredity and choice, see the possibility of your life full of grace. You are no longer part of a family system that is broken in your generations. You're part of the bloodline of Christ and your life is grace-filled and transformational by His power. In our family, in the church, the unchangeable things move. In our family, the impossible is possible. Here's what I'd like you to do. We're going to turn towards our starter group conversations now. And I'm excited for you to dive into these questions. As the woman caught in adultery, as Mephibosheth, as someone broken in need of grace, and understand all that God has done for you and that it doesn't rest on you. You can't save yourself. Thanks be to God that he did. Who is the church? We talked about it this past Sunday. Um, here's, here's how we're going to take a look at it today. I would like one of you in your group to pull out uh, your Bible and open it to Ephesians chapter 2 and read verses 4 through 9. And then we'll be back. Do you remember a time from your childhood or even teenage years where you were caught doing something wrong? Um, how would you describe the feeling that you had when that happened? Answer that, and then leader, if you can go ahead and ask the next two questions that follow it. This past week's sermon began with a story of the woman caught in adultery. And uh, what I would like to do is ask you or someone in your group to get their Bible out and open it to John chapter eight and read verses one through 11. And then uh, there'll be some follow-up questions to that. As we ask them, if you find yourself in a good conversation, don't hurry and move on, stay in that good conversation. How can this story teach us to respond to sin? Answer that question in the next three, and then we'll be back. I'll re-ask that. Do me a favor, look, have someone in your group open their Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 9 and read the story of David and Mephibosheth. And there will be the follow-up questions uh, your leader will walk through with you. Why do you think it's important for us to remember the phrase that Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, and this is not from yourselves. This grace is not from yourselves. Why do you think that's important? 